Hi, good morning Albert. My name is Mahira. I'm your invigilator for the OIT speaking session on the 17th of August 2023. How are you doing? Hi, good morning. I'm good. Thank you for asking. How about you? Well, I'm great. Can you tell me your full name, for the record please? My full name is Albert Bruce. Okay. What is your candidate number? My candidate number is 23502350. All right. Are you taking this test as a nurse? Yes, I am. Okay. Can I see your ID, please? Sure. Here it is. Okay. Now, let's move on to warm-up sessions. The warm-up questions are not assessed, and are a chance for us, to get used to each other's voices. We'll just talk for two to three minutes. All right, Mihir. How has the increasing use of telehealth, and remote patient monitoring, impacted your nursing practice? Telehealth and remote patient monitoring have significantly transformed, the way healthcare is delivered. As a nurse, I have adapted to using telehealth platforms to conduct virtual patient assessments, provide education, and monitor vital signs remotely. This approach has allowed me to extend my reach to patients who have difficulty accessing in-person care, enabling timely interventions, and reducing hospital readmissions. What challenges have you encountered while using telehealth for patient care, and how did you overcome them? While telehealth offers numerous benefits, some challenges I've encountered include technical issues, ensuring patient privacy, and limited physical assessment capabilities. To overcome these, I've honed my communication skills to provide clear instructions to patients, familiarized myself with various telehealth platforms, and emphasized the importance of maintaining a secure and private online environment. How do you ensure effective communication and rapport building with patients during virtual consultations? Establishing rapport is crucial in virtual consultations. I begin by introducing myself and explaining the telehealth process to the patient. I use open-ended questions to encourage conversation and active listening to understand their concerns fully. Sharing visual aids or diagrams helps explain medical concepts and I always ensure the patient's questions are addressed before concluding the session. In what ways? Do you integrate remote patient monitoring data into your nursing care plan? Remote patient monitoring provides valuable data that aids in patient care planning. I regularly review data such as vital signs, medication adherence, and activity levels to identify trends or anomalies. This information informs my nursing interventions, allowing me to adjust care plans, provide timely patient education, and collaborate with other healthcare professionals to ensure comprehensive and patient-centered care. As telehealth continues to evolve, how do you stay updated on the latest technologies and best practices in remote patient care? I prioritize continuous learning by attending webinars, workshops, and conferences focused on telehealth advancements and men remote patient monitoring. Additionally, I actively engage in online nursing communities and discussion forums where Professionals share their experiences and insights. By staying informed and adaptable, I aim to provide the highest level of care to my patients in this rapidly changing healthcare landscape. Great. Thank you very much for sharing that. So, let's move on to role play now. I'll take the part of the patient, or perhaps a relative, and you'll take your professional role. The purpose of the role play is to get evidence of your ability to communicate effectively with patients. Use your ability to fulfill as much of the role play as possible. Do you have any questions? No, Mahira. You have up to three minutes to prepare the role play. You will start the role play after that time. I'll let you know when the three minutes are up. You can ask me if there is anything you are not sure about and you can make notes on the role play card if you want to. Here's a pencil for making notes. Thank you, Mihira. You can look at the card during the test, but you must return it to me at the end of the test. Please start preparing now. Thank you.
your preparation time is over. The role play will now last for about five minutes. Don't worry if I stop you when the time is up. Can you start the role play, please? Hello, Mihira. I'm Albert Bruce, the nurse who will be taking care of you today. How are you feeling? I'm feeling okay, thank you. Mihira, may I know why you requested to see me? Nurse, I'm a bit nervous about going home. I understand. You've just had a major procedure, and it's normal to feel anxious. Is there anything in particular that you are worried about? Well, yes. I requested to see you because I don't know how to manage my condition at home. What should I do, and what should I avoid? Okay, Mahira, don't worry. Let me explain to you the aftercare instructions for your pacemaker. First of all, you should avoid driving for at least a week after the surgery, or until your doctor tells you it's safe to do so. You should also avoid lifting heavy objects or doing strenuous activities for about six weeks. You can do mild activities with intermittent rest, such as walking, gardening, or household chores. I see. And what about my wound? How should I care for it? You should keep your wound clean and dry. You can shower with a waterproof dressing, but do not soak or scrub the wound. You should also avoid wearing tight or rough clothing that may irritate the wound. You should check your wound daily for any signs of infection, such as redness, swelling, pus, or fever. If you notice any of these symptoms, you should contact your doctor immediately. Definitely I will. And what are the possible complications or side effects of the pacemaker? I'm afraid it might stop working or cause me more problems. Mihira, your concern is quite natural. The pacemaker is a very reliable device that helps regulate your heartbeat. However, there are some rare complications that may occur, such as infection, bleeding, bruising, or damage to the heart or blood vessels. You should also be aware of some warning signs that indicate your pacemaker is not working properly, such as chest pain, shortness of breath, dizziness, fainting, or palpitations. If you experience any of these symptoms, you should seek medical attention right away. I see. That sounds scary. Don't worry too much. These complications are very uncommon, and most people with pacemakers live normal and active lives. The pacemaker also has a battery that lasts for several years and can be easily replaced when it runs low. Okay, that's good to know. And what about the medication I need to take? How will it affect me? I appreciate your consciousness. Mihira, you will need to take some medication to prevent blood clots and reduce the risk of stroke. The medication may have some side effects, such as bleeding, bruising, or stomach upset. You should follow the instructions on how to take the medication and report any adverse reactions to your doctor. You should also inform your doctor of any other medication you are taking, as some drugs may interact with the blood thinners. Okay, thank you for the information. Surely, I will do as you suggest. And nurse, what about my lifestyle? Do I need to make any changes? Yes, you do. You should quit smoking and limit alcohol intake, as these are risk factors for your condition. Smoking and drinking can damage your heart and blood vessels and interfere with your pacemaker function. You should also reduce your salt intake and eat a balanced diet that is low in fat and cholesterol. This will help lower your blood pressure and prevent further heart problems. I see. But it's hard for me to quit smoking and limit alcohol. I've been doing it for a long time and it helps me cope with stress. I understand that it's difficult to change your habits, but it's very important for your health and well-being. Smoking and drinking can worsen your condition and increase your risk of complications. There are many ways to cope with stress without harming yourself, such as exercise, meditation, hobbies, or counseling. You can also seek help from your doctor or a support group if you need assistance in quitting smoking or drinking. Okay, thank you for the advice. I'll try my best to follow it. You're welcome. Do you have any other questions or concerns?
No, not at the moment. All right then. I hope this has been helpful to you. Please remember that, we are here to support you, and you can always call us, if you need anything. Thank you very much. You've been very kind and helpful. My pleasure. Take care and have a nice day. Thank you. That is the end of your OIT speaking role play. All the best. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please, like this video and encourage us. Subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Kindly comment your suggestions and help us do better.